Is the New York City subway system doomed? Watch till the end. We've got a lot to discuss. What's up, members of the Barrio? It's Jod coming to you from my new apartment in Park Slope, Brooklyn. And today we're gonna break down all of the negative publicity that the MTA and the New York City subway system has been receiving of late. There's been a string of assaults, people getting shoved onto the tracks, some scary stuff. And on top of all that, the MTA is having major financial difficulties. So we're gonna break it all down. It's not a good time for New York City Transit right now. Let's start with some of the scarier stuff first. We're gonna discuss the string of assaults that have been occurring on the subway system. Now, just to be clear, the odds of this happening to you are extremely slim, but it really hits home for any New Yorker because you could just be standing there minding your own business and somebody could just come up and, and shove you or punch you. And when it happens, it makes the news guaranteed. So that's why it feels a lot worse and it feels a lot more widespread than it actually is. In the last week alone, there have been three reported cases of people getting shoved onto the subway tracks. One not very far from here at Atlantic Avenue in Brooklyn. And then there was a report of a Broadway actor getting randomly sucker punched in the Upper West Side in the subway. Now this is something that makes any New Yorker alarmed. The good news is that nobody was seriously injured and there were arrests made in all of the cases of people getting shoved onto the subway tracks. Now as somebody that takes the subway quite a bit, I'll admit I am definitely more vigilant these days with less people underground. And also with less people taking the subway, your odds of encountering a mentally unhinged person definitely increase. Unfortunately, the bigger problem here is that a lot of mentally unstable people are not getting the treatment that they need, and I don't have the answers to this. This is a very controversial topic. This isn't a gang thing. There aren't a group of robbers running amok right now uh, in the subway system. This has been solo people who are just attacking bystanders at random, and it's, it's very scary. Now, statistically speaking, crime is actually down on the subway system. However, ridership is also down 70%. Now, more people on the subway equals more opportunity for petty crimes like pickpocketing somebody while they're sleeping or grabbing someone's phone out of their hand right as the subway doors close. But at the same time, less people equals less witnesses and some folks may feel more emboldened to act aggressively with less witnesses around. Which brings up a bit of a catch-22 for New Yorkers because you want more people underground as witnesses and to try to deter certain types of crime. But at the same time, you don't want too many people taking the subway due to COVID-19 risks. My take on this is you need to be extra aware these days when you're taking the train with so few people underground, at least compared to normal times. And this is even more important for solo women who take the train quite frequently. There's a lot of things you can do. One of them would be using an app like City Mapper and seeing what time the next train is coming and don't go underground until the train is a couple of minutes away. Heck, I even do that myself. I live just a few minutes from the train. I'm always checking it on my phone. I'm not in the mood to spend 15 minutes waiting for a train underground if I don't have to. Another thing you could do is when the train is coming by, you, know, you can look as it passes which train has a bit more people. Maybe don't go inside of a train that's empty. And also you can use the indication board. I've talked about this uh, in a couple of videos. When you see the indication board underneath, that's where the conductor is going to be. And if you jump into that subway car, you can quickly get the conductor's attention if there's a problem. Look, I know a lot of this is scary and the media is playing up these assaults, but they do happen. Now, New York City still does not have anywhere near the high crime statistics that it had in the 80s or 90s, but still, you've got to be aware because there's a lot less people underground. Simple as that. Now, 
the good news is, I think once there's a vaccine and New York City returns to a bit more normalcy, more people will feel safer and more confident to take the subway. Also, there'll be more commuters. There'll be tourists again. There'll be more people, more eyeballs. So I think it is going to get better, but for the next couple of months, you've got to be paying attention. Guys, on a brighter note, I wanted to make an announcement that Adriana has just released a pack of New York City postcards on her Etsy shop, and I've got a very cool offer. For the next 10 people that join my Patreon at any tier, I'm gonna send you one of these postcards anywhere in the world for free, just as a bonus for joining, but only for the next 10 people that join. We've got a lot of really cool perks, bonus videos, early access to content, even a map of all my favorite places to visit in New York City, putting a link down below. Check out my Patreon and also check out Adriana's Etsy shop if you just wanna buy a five pack of these really cool New York City postcards. Moving forward, let's talk about the MTA's financial problems. Now, the New York Times just published an article titled, Subway service could be cut by 40% if no federal aid arrives. This is a worst case scenario, but some of the things that were discussed include 15 minute wait times between trains on weekends, some lines eliminated entirely, a quarter cut in services for buses, and reducing LIRR and Metro North train service. They also could fire a lot of people. Now, they are likely to get some federal aid soon, so a lot of this worst case scenario stuff is probably not going to happen. And also, with a vaccine on the horizon, as I discussed before, I think ridership is going to go up, which is going to make more money for the MTA. Another thing that is very likely to happen is a fair raise. Now, they had discussed this fair raise before COVID-19 even hit the city, and they are likely to raise new fares to $2.85, almost $3 per swipe. One idea that's actually being floated around right now, although it's not very popular, is to potentially eliminate 30-day unlimited Metro cards. And the people that really take the most advantage of these cards are commuters who are using it to get to work five days a week, to and fro, and with that, they would break even and then any other ride they want to take is essentially free on weekends to go explore the city. So it's been discussed. I don't know if they're going to be eliminating the 30 day unlimited card, but it is a potential way for the MTA to try to make some money back. I'm curious what your guys' opinion is on that. Tell me in the comments. Look, like many other industries in New York City, the MTA has been really hard hit. It's been one of the biggest crises in their history. But we could also look at some other industries around New York City, let's say the hotel industry. I can't imagine they're faring very well either. But as time goes on, I keep saying it, more and more people are gonna feel comfortable enough to ride the subway and that should alleviate this a bit. In the meantime, New Yorkers are just gonna have to deal with the sometimes spooky feeling of there not being a lot of people riding the subway with you. It's not as bad as it was back in the spring in May or June. I took the subway a couple of times and there was nobody in my subway car or just one other person. It has gotten a lot better. There are more people riding it, thankfully. Do I think the New York City subway system is doomed? No, I think it's gonna bounce back. It's just gonna take time.